Hello once again, and I'm going to continue on with this uh, uh, painting. And I think I definitely need to make this my last video as it just goes on and on. Um, watercolor takes some time. Uh, it's often hurry up and wait, as I've explained to many of you. So we will just uh, get going right away. Let's take a look at the painting again, where we're at right now. And um, what I'm really trying to focus on uh, today, I think, is really bringing unity to the piece here. We can see how, first of all, um, well, let's just take a look at the little critter here, or little badger. And one thing I notice right now is because I have this area of color here, but very little of it in the head, but I actually am finding that the head visually is not united with the body and that's a real problem. So simply I fix that by bringing some of this color that's in the body into the head, regardless of whether I see it in the photograph or not. Uh, the photograph is not, is only my guideline. It's only my reference. It does not uh, dictate what I do. What dictates what I do is what I see happening on my page here. Uh, the other thing that I see where I notice I am lacking unity is between uh, my little animal and the background. And once again, what I need to do is pull some things in there and I see that my darks, these uh, cool dark areas need to be present in the uh, background as well. So that's what we will be focusing on right away. And of course I'll be trying to bring some more green. I want to get a sense of some grass around him. I like that in the photograph. So let's get going. Uh, first thing I think I want to do is try and get some of these dark colors into my background and that's where I will begin. So I'm going to pull in some purple here. I don't want to get too dark, um, but I do see that in here. So I'm going to work um, maybe a bit horizontal in some areas a bit. Uh, vertical, depending on if I'm, you know, if it's an area where grass is laying down on the ground, or is it actually uh, areas where the grass is literally uh, lifted up? So I'm just starting off with this cool uh, purple, and I'll pull it up into here as well. Lay this in as we can see right away. The value of this is not near to the point where it will need to be. I think creating this uh, vertical shape, which will take on the feel of the grass, shadows in the grass, will also help unify just the shapes feeling similar to what is happening um, in him as well. So I'm gonna pull some of this color right into him so that the legs even get a little bit lost in there. So I'm actually, now typically we do work light to dark, so it's maybe not um, normal to be laying in these darker areas. But as you know, in art, all rules are just guidelines. And I do want to get some other cool colors in here as well. And so I'm bringing in some of my blue. And I really do want this color to come up into him. So he really starts to run into the background and his background runs into him, bringing him into the environment more now. By the time I'm all finished, much of this will be taking on a green, of course, yeah, because getting that feel that he's in the grass, but we can see you already. He's not so separate from this. Visually balance wise, I'm gonna carry some of this over, create some balance. It's feeling a little heavy on the left side of my page. Let's 
get some of the purple over here as well. And I think I'm going to bring in some of the Payne's gray while this is still wet. Right away, creating an impression of the grasses, laying those in. Again, repeating colors that I see in him. I really do want to get this area here to really sort of run into like it does in the photo. Just dab at that a little bit. Okay. While I'm at it, let's just bring another glaze into the mask. Get that one more shade darker. Charge that a little bit, but get that to blend. We're going to put one more shade in his nose. Bring out just a little more form yet on that side. I'm going to soften that edge. And let's bring that rose color into there again so I don't lose that. So we want that. And yeah, we better do both sides. to my painting here that maybe got a bit dark. So let's turn that down. Again, soften my edge and bring some of that dark up here into the ear. Another layer into the stripes along the back. And even, I'm just going to carry a big, broad gray. That's a bit heavy. I'm going to dab at that in just a moment. Let's pull that out. Lift that just a little bit again. And while that's wet, I'm going to bring in a bit of this burnt umber if I can. So I just want to tone it down on my, so it's not so strong. What I did was um, wet it a bit on my page. Let's bring some of that on my scrap paper here. I'm going to right away. That's pretty strong. So we're going to lift that right away before that dries on me. Let's get some of that red that was up in the other parts. Okay, so now I'm working at trying to unify this part of him with the rest by carrying some of that color in there. Let me get some of that rose warm color, not too much, just a bit. I'm going to carry just a little bit of it into here. So you can see it lays in when I first put it in there, it's really strong. So let's just tone that down right away. Again, what I'm doing, the purpose of this is not to copy the photo. The purpose of what I'm doing is to unify the head with the rest of him. That's why I am bringing these colors in there for visual unity. Okay. 
Okay, so that's that is my purpose for that. I even want to bring some of that down into here too. Again, because you need ooh, that's pretty strong, isn't it? So let's let's not get that too warm. Let's not overpower that. But I do so let's wet this first and then it will dilute it enough. So it's not going to be so strong and then we can get that to travel through, travel around and toning it down. Because I see a lot of that ground, brownish, warm dirt. It's probably just sort of a dirt. And also, again, it's an opportunity. I'm going to pull it up in here. Opportunity to bring these colors to unify him again with the environment that we he finds himself in, okay? See, I've really kind of lost his ear here. Perhaps normally I would maybe mask. There's different ways you can do that. If you don't want to have any opaque white um, laid in, then I, that would have been a great place to have masked that area and have masked some of this uh, through here as well. I really want to keep this uh, loose in here. Okay. I'm going to carry uh, some of this burnt up umber, some more of that into um, the body through here. Let's get just some. Some pure water. I'm going to tone down this purple in the back. Let's not get that feeling too opaque. Carry it through so that in my highlight my shadow area as well. But now let's not make this too dominant contrast here. Mix in some of the Payne's gray right away so we can create uh, areas of gradation color happening. I'm only using my smear because the Payne's gray is such a dominant color. I don't like this shape, it's just too much. So we're going to try and make that not. Right, so, so much. Turn it down a little bit though at the edge. That's a bit smooth in here. So let's get some of the dark. Which means I need to bring some of that dark in here. I'm just trying to break up that really smooth line. Keep it neutral by bringing in the Payne's gray. So it doesn't get too much for what I'm trying to accomplish. Now I remember mentioning how that seemed too smooth there. So let's break up that edge of where my dark and light meet there. So break that up just a little bit. 
get a little bit in here. Bring a little bit of my Payne's Gray into here. And let's get some more of the Payne's Gray into my background here. So I'm just charging it, dropping it in, letting it go. Once again, cool it down. Some cool blues. And now we need to let that dry before we can um, continue on. I really want to get some of those greens now in the background. Um, looking at my photo, I could keep going dark, but I don't, if, if I go too dark here, I have to go dark everywhere. And I need to, even though in the photo, the mask is much darker. Um, this is the, I think I've established the amount of contrast that I want. And I, um, if I just make that mask really dark and there's nothing dark here elsewhere, it's, it's going to be off balance. And I don't want that to happen. I don't want to lose that, that balance. So, um, so I'm, I'm going to stop. I think it's time to stop with that, that mask. I'm just bring just a little bit more in here of the umber. But also I'm getting dangerously close to overworking that. So let's just tone that down a little bit. I'm gonna drop in a little bit of this. Rose color. Just to warm that up a little bit and to keep it unified with the rest of that there. Okay. All right. Let's pause this for a moment and let that dry before I paint in um, my grasses. So um, I'll see if this is going to work in a minute here. I can turn this up so we can see the two side by side. And I'll hold this up. And we can see my painting and my reference. Okay. So not exactly the same, but that's not what we're going for. Anyway, let's turn that back down. All right. And then we'll pause this a moment and come back to finish um, the green grass around him. Okay, so this is all dried now, so I can um, put another layer over top of it. I've decided that this shadowed area should get carried over into here. And I've also feel that I want to bring in a little more of the umber color. So, um, so I've got that one prepared. I'm going to get a bit of a, also a darker Haynes Gray to bring in there as well. So let's go ahead and get that shape along the back here. Once again, continuing on using a similar sort of shape as to what's been happening so far. And let's get some of that paint gray in there right away. I may have to later on get and some of that purple as well. But I do want some of this umber to really come into this as well. And be able to create just a little bit more of a shadow. Now I need to make sure I'm getting that elsewhere. Just going to tone down this purple a little bit so I can bring it into there as well. And at the same time, drop a little bit of the Gaines Gray in there as well. Again, unity being important, I bring it in somewhere else as well. So 
So pulling it into this shadow and onto this leg. Bring it up from here, bringing these shapes all together. And I really want some of it up in here as well, so it's not only at the back of my painting, at the back of my little critter, but coming up in here, warm that up just a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, that one. And my light will be orange. That's a bit. So this quick dab will take care of that. And I'm even feeling a bit in here. Come on. Let's get that nice and golden rich. There we go. Again, so I can. Pull some of that out if it becomes too much. Right away. Hard dab like that. Bring a bit into the nose. That's warm up that. Great. Now you just. <laughs> Now I have a very funny looking view on my video. Sorry, that was my son about to come in yelling at me as I'm recording. <laughs> Anyways, that's the reality of it. All right. Pull a little bit of this up into the back area here and even just a little bit into here but not too much so let's pull that away a little bit so it's just a hint and a little bit more Let's go ahead and take a look. Whoops, we can see the two together. It's always good to back away. Now, looking at this, now it starts to feel like I do need to get this a little darker yet. Now I'm starting to feel it. So let's go ahead and increase that contrast in there. And again. In there as well. And some in this area here. Just dropping in some Payne's Gray while I'm at it. Because I do want to. Make sure again that my little guy is unified with the environment he's in. We bring just a little bit of this over. Into here. While well, that's drying, I'm going to get my green mixed up. And all right, let's lay in some of our grasses. 
wait, I didn't have my cross the plate. It must have transferred then from my iPod to my phone. Right away, I do want to try to make sure that I am. Not getting this too too much, too bold. And let's get some other color happening in there so I pull in a little bit of the blue. Keep that cool. And then bring some of the green to here. Little bits of green. some of those same colors into this part of the greens, just some of the grass. Transparent, so we're getting um, a nice mix of colors showing through. And now of course in here. this area. So by laying in those shadows before and now putting another transparent layer of green over top, we automatically get our highlights and shadows. And the grass areas. So it just sort of happens automatically. This also, you'll see now, this highlight on him stands out that much more. Really kind of taken on it dry brush effect here. And all I want to do is just help bring the viewer's eye a little bit over to here, sort of create a sense of our little guy's in motion. He's moving along on his way somewhere perhaps and we've startled him. Um, don't know where he's going. But he's now definitely in it. Um, and then the environment. I'm going to bring a little bit more green into the back here as well. So let's just lay in some straight water. Up into there. And we should be able to just kind of fade that out now with some subtle green. Again, just an environment. We don't know necessarily what it is what's going on. We don't want to make that too big of a deal because we don't want this background to distract us from him. It should merely help. Just help strengthen who he is. Helps add a bit more to the story that may be behind this picture, but not becomes something that is challenging the viewer for attention. So. Now I'm just going to, I don't know if I would normally do this in a picture where I would actually lay in some opaque. Well, I know I wouldn't normally because it's just not typically my practice. 
Um, but I am going to, in this case, in this one, just. Um, simply because just to show that it is something you can do. So I need to clean up my um, my little pan of white paint here. And let's just pause this a minute as I get some nice clean water as well. Okay, so I have an I'm mixing up an opaque white now again in a watercolor since watercolor is typically transparent you achieve white simply by leaving the white of the paper which is why we have masking but uh, it's very common for an artist watercolors to work with opaque and transparent colors together so in this case I'll just sort of show you a couple of things if I do want to work with an opaque white I really need to get that in there and okay, so in this case, just to bring in a little something more into that ear, which I felt got lost. So you need a lot less water and a lot more paint, of course. And I can also, at the same time, bring in a little bit more highlight in here. Now, very often, it will take on a different sort of effect if you only have, uh, what I mean is the opaque will have a different sort of look than uh, transparent. So it's important that we get it in more than just one place. So that's what I'm doing here. And I'm getting some, I'm gonna spread it out a bit. So I'm not gonna only put it on that ear. I'm gonna carry it on to this ear. I'm gonna bring some opaque white over into these other highlights. You see, I put it on the eyes, the sparkle, or whatever you wanna call that, the glare. And the eyes hardly even showing up, especially if I'm working in an area that already is white. Now let's look and see, can we get it anywhere else? Yep, yeah. so we can just get a little bit of it in here as well. Really, maybe should have had a tinier brush. Very subtle, but don't want it to draw attention to itself. So now when you put something contrasting in, it will draw attention to itself unless you put it in more. If you only do a little, sometimes we get the backwards. We think, oh, I'm only gonna put a little bit of it so no one will notice it. However, by only doing a little bit, it stands off on its own and it will tend to become more noticeable. We get just the opposite effect. So just like if you are, well, it's just like any sort of crowd, um, yeah, if you, for whatever reason, are in a crowd and you're looking different and there's only one of you, then you will stand out. However, if there is 10 of you in that crowd and what you're all of the same sort of difference, the 10 of you will be less noticeable than just one, okay? So same sort of thing. So that's why I don't want to do this in only one area, but in multiple areas, spread it out so it's not quite so noticeable. A little bit in here. Maybe just a 
just a little bit more in the back. Okay. All right. So let's tilt my camera here so we can get a view of our little guy here. There we go. Okay. So we're trying putting this straight. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm feeling pleased enough with this uh, uh, little badger, at least pleased enough for now. So hopefully this is helpful. Hopefully, uh, yeah, this gives you an idea of how to approach uh, layering, uh, how to approach warm and cool, how to think about value, and um, how to think of uh, bold and subtle, all of those things. So uh, again, thanks for um, watching. Uh, just if, in case you stumble upon this video and you weren't part of the watercolor class, uh, well, thank you for viewing that. And this has just been done um, as a part of a watercolor class that I started during this strange COVID season that we find ourselves in. Uh, in 19 or sorry in 2020 so all right uh, for those who are in the class thank you and um, really hope that this has been worth it for you all right bye all